Hey guys, so this video is the first of what I hope to make a series over the winter during the off season. Um, and the idea is basically, I've got a lot of old video footage that I've never posted, and a lot of it isn't too exciting. So I thought instead of just posting the footage, I'd add a little bit of narration. And in my narration, I'll talk a little bit about what's going on in the video, but, I, but then I'll also discuss some other topic. And for this other topic, it will be racing related, but it could be anything, you know, from like racing experiences I've had um, to my racing plans in the future to like some karting tips or just like news about karting or, you know, racing in general. So before I get into this video, I figure for my second video of this series, I'll do a Q&A. So if you have any questions for me, post them in the comments below of this video. Alright, so now that that's all out of the way, in this first video, we're watching a practice session from my first race weekend ever. And I'll also talk a little bit about myself, like how I got into racing, and kind of like the path that I've gone along during this time that I've been racing. So I actually haven't watched this video in years, so this video is from 2009. Um, I think sometime around October or so, and this is on, this is at Pocono, Pennsylvania. So Pocono is a big, like, 2.5 mile oval track, but in the infield they actually have three different road courses. Um, and this one is the Pocono South course. And actually a few years after this video, they actually um, repaved the track and redid the infield road courses. So. I think there's still a Pocono South road course, but it's actually different from the one in this video. So the first interesting thing about this video, the kid getting into the car in front of me, um, I think he's like 14 years old at this time, but he actually went on to race in um, the US F2000 series. So that's kind of neat. Um, some of the other people that I've raced against in the time that I've been racing have kind of gone on to race at higher levels. Um, and I don't know, I guess I kind of think that's cool, um, keeping track of the people I've raced against and kind of seeing um, where they, what they might have moved on to. So a little more background on what we're watching here. So this is at Bertle Roos Racing School. And basically they're like a school and they offer programs that are fully arrive and drive. So they own the cars and you just show up and you get to drive the cars and they offer obviously a lot of instruction. And this isn't a sponsored video or anything, but I would definitely recommend checking them out if you're looking into getting into racing or getting into racing cars or anything like that. So I finally got the car started and I'm ready to go out. So I figure at this point I'll go back a little in time and kind of talk about how I got to this point. Uh, you know, about to start my first car race ever. So if you're watching this, you might have had a similar experience. Uh, but basically, racing was just my dream since I was a little kid. And I can vividly, vividly remember um, seeing racing on TV for the first time ever when I was eight years old, and I was just captivated by it, like nothing else that I've ever seen. And throughout my childhood, I just basically watched racing on TV as much as I could, whether it was like NASCAR or kart or IRL whatever they called it at the time. And as I got older and older, I just kept watching and kept learning more and more about it. Um, at some point, when I was maybe 12 or 13, you know, we, we got the internet, we got AOL or whatever, and I just got on there, and I just started reading on the internet, all I could about racing, 
following all the message boards, all the news. And basically my interest just grew and grew. By the time I was in high school, I had already decided that I wanted to race. You know, like some kids, they want to be in the NBA or the NFL, you know, and for me, I wanted to race cars. So unfortunately though, it was easy to learn that you know, there was basically no realistic way for me to start racing at that time when I was a kid. You know, um, my family didn't have much money, and I didn't know anybody in racing. And on top of all that, my mom was just like really against the idea, 100%. She basically would not let me race. You know? No way. So I'll go back to that story in a little bit. Now looking back at the video, it looks like I'm starting my second round here. Um, yep, I'm actually pretty impressed looking back at this video. I mean, I I kind of feel like I'm doing pretty good, you know? Um, watching some of my newer videos again, I look back and you know, I see a lot of mistakes and places I can improve. And then watching this, it actually looks pretty solid. Um, so this track, it is a really short lap. I think it's something like 58 or 59 seconds. And as I say that, it sounds like I just missed a shift here. So, yeah, I mean, at this point, I'm still pretty green and still running. Okay, so now back to the story. So I was a kid and I really wanted to race, but I didn't have the means to. So anyway, eventually, you know, I go off to college. And during this time, I'm really busy, as a lot of people are, but I definitely don't forget about racing. And if anything, during this time, just like my passion continues to grow, and I'm still playing the racing scenes and falling online. And I remember following up on like the up and coming racers, and following up on the like the feeder series, like basically the minor leagues of racing, and following up on these kids and. For me, just like, I was wishing that I was in their position, you know, and that I had the chance to race, you know. But the, rea but the reality is, you know, few people had that opportunity, and I wasn't one of those people, you know, and that was just the way it was. So instead, you know, I realized that my best opportunity to race was to basically just stay in school and finish my degree and then make money and then, you know, then I finally have the opportunity to use my money to race. So then eventually I graduate from college and I get a job and then immediately I don't actually go race. So I won't go into the details of this in this video because I think it would just take too long. But initially I was just kind of adjusting to my working life, I guess you could say. And I was a little unsure of if I wanted to race or kind of just have a normal life, I guess you could say. But within a year, basically I had discovered this thing called indoor karting. So I discovered this indoor kart track. And I basically kind of fell in love with racing. I had never even stepped foot on the racetrack at 22 years old. But now, you know, this indoor car track has given me the opportunity to win. And it kind of like was everything I was hoping for. So I quickly became just like super obsessed with racing. And it wasn't just watching or following it anymore. This was actually driving. And after not long, I had decided that I didn't want to give up on my dream as a kid of being a professional racer. Despite not getting the chance to get started when I was a kid and fighting, I still wanted to at least try, you know, to do what I could to make it to as high a level of racing as I could. That's how I felt at this time. So I thought a lot about it. and. I tried to find the best path that would give me the greatest chance to become a professional, you know, and make it to the highest level that I could. And to do that, I 
decided that I needed to go to like a professional racing school. So that's kind of how I ended up in, the, in this video at Brutal Roost Racing School. So I was 23 years old and I basically just dropped all my money into this three day introduction to racing school. So I go to VIR and I do that and it goes great. Unfortunately, I don't have any video of that. But of course after that, I have to have more. I have to take the next step. So the next step was the rookie camp, which was like a two-day race weekend for new racers. And that's what this video is like. So getting back to the video, the past few laps I'm just building up more and more speed. And you can hear, you can hear like into the brake zone, I'm pushing the braking more. The downshifts sound pretty good actually. Just carrying more and more speed. And here I actually get it pretty sideways in this hair. So I was like, as you can maybe imagine, I was really motivated at this time in my life about racing. So I mean, I just remember this experience, you know, being in this race car in my first race, being so intense, you know, like to me, it felt like I was in Formula One, you know, and I was putting a lot of pressure on myself to do as well as I could. And every lap, you know, like every second, you know, I viewed it as my opportunity. And I didn't want to let my opportunity slip away. And after this practice session, the next day, I actually ended up winning the pole for the race and winning the race. Which was just amazing, you know, just an amazing feeling, undescribable. I mean... I was just thrilled to be in my first race ever, you know, and then to actually win it, it was just unreal. And looking back, you know, it's kind of impressive seeing what you can do when you really want something and really push yourself. And that's something that's really helped me in racing and just in life in general. Okay, so this next lap, they actually black flagged me to bring me in to run with my instructor. So we actually do some lead follow and some simulated racing. To keep this video from being too long, I have sped some of this up, but we'll rejoin again in a minute. So now to try to wrap up this story. This has actually already taken much longer than I expected, so I won't go into the details of my racing after this moment. Maybe I'll save that for another video. I've had a lot of additional experiences racing various things since this time, but if it's not obvious, I never became a professional race car driver. At some point, I did kind of decide to stop doing that and just race for fun. And I'm still doing that and really enjoying it. And that's not to say if some crazy opportunity presented itself, like Roger Penske called me and offered me a ride, that I wouldn't jump on the opportunity. I'm certainly not like trying to call him up every day. Like I may or may not have tried to do many years ago. But yeah, so the rest of the story will have to wait for another video. If you like this, definitely thumbs up, leave a comment. And I think I'll just leave the rest of the session for anyone that's interested. With no narration. I actually really like the sound of these cars. If you're watching this closely, you can actually see in here some places where I'm starting to overdrive the car. And a few moments where I get it a little sideways. 
one time when I get it really sideways and almost spin. So enjoy the rest of the video if you want, and I'll see you guys next time.